Learning Exchange session uh, for the eCourse 3 Mobility as a Service and ITS um, training. So this is an eCourse that is part of the Solutions Plus project. And uh, actually the last live session of our e-course. So I hope you enjoy it and um, yeah, take advantage of it as well. So here the idea was uh, for participants of, uh, of the training um, to, to meet some of the trainers uh, that we've worked with and also learn more about the topics that we've, um, that we, we've introduced uh, during this training. Um, but also, and most importantly, to to ask questions to trainers and exchange with them. Uh, so we have four speakers with us today. Uh, Meng Lu from Swarco, um, who will be presenting some of Swarco's projects related to ITS and maths. We have Diogo Martins from City Able, who is going to introduce how City Able enables inclusive transport and mobility. Uh, then we will have Tito Tai from Mobility Data, who will be explaining how Mobility Data enables quality usage, uh, quality data usage. And finally, uh, Fabio Bacchetti from Plus Service, who will be talking a little bit about Plus Service's experience in developing um, the APP. And so how it will work is that uh, after each present presentation, we'll give a minute or two for participants to ask uh, questions concerning what was just presented. And then at the end of the sessions for the last um, 10 minutes, we'll have uh, a Q&A so that participants can ask questions about um, what was presented during the whole e-course. So, all of the trainings that were posted on the Mobility Academy and um, yeah, whichever question also inspires you and you would like to know a little bit more from uh, from our experts about. Um, so yes, so the third third e-course, just a short uh, reminder that um, here, the goal was really to explore the relationship between e-mobility and the pursuit to decarbonizing our transport systems um, by looking into ITS and mobility as a service. Um, so we had four, four modules uh, to go into uh, some information about this. Um, I'd like to thank you all for participating in the e-course. It was really interesting um, reading through your your answers of uh, of the assignments and uh, your experience with mass and ITS and so on. So we're really grateful for for your participation. I do want to encourage those who haven't submitted all your um, all your assignments to do so. You have until the twenty sixth of February to um, to submit all of your assignments uh, if you'd like to receive a certificate. Um, yeah, uh, disclaiming that you have followed uh, this e-course and you have um, gained knowledge from it. So definitely worth it and I encourage you to do so. Um, but just so you know, this e-course, if it's something that you would like to recommend uh, in the future to your contacts and so on, uh, it will still be on the Mobility Academy. So please feel free to keep uh, sharing it with uh, your network. Um, let's see, and then, oh yes, I would also like to remind you to fill in the feedback survey, which we've also posted on the Mobility Academy as an announcement. Um, yeah, we would really appreciate it. It really helps us to learn about um, what worked, what didn't work, what you would like to do differently for next time. Um, so yeah, we really take into account uh, the feedback that you give us and it um, helps us to to um, to improve our service. Uh, so I think that's about it for this short introduction. Now I'll leave the floor to Meng Lu to um, yeah, give her presentation on uh, Swarco's projects. Or actually, sorry, I'll be sharing the use the 
lights. So I, I can start. Uh, hello, everyone. Yes, uh, thanks for the introduction, Cassandra. Um, so I, I, I myself have been working in this uh, intelligent transport system domain since 2002 when I started my PhD. And later on, I worked for a software company, also semi-government. I worked for logistics several years and also uh, as a visiting professor for university. Uh, for two years. Uh, I joined uh, this company uh, since around this morning, around six years ago. So it was a peak traffic was bought by different companies and now we are uh, in Swarco. Uh, next, please. Uh, can you move to the next? Yes. So uh, when I think about this session, I would like to First thing I would like to say is that learning is not just to pick up what you have seen in the materials or anyway, we have already had so many education courses, programs and training pro programs. I, I would say that is the one side. One side is get insight and another side is to, to be critical, to be critical about whatever you have heard or you, you have uh, read, read and also to be critical about yourself, what actions you would take. Uh, what we are thinking about uh, this issue. So if we think about ITS and uh, uh, mass, I don't like the term, so I use sustainable mobility and services. What do I think about is sustainability? But to achieve this goal, we have a lot of tools and solutions, neither uh, either technical or, or non-technical solutions. They all have positive positive impacts and may create negative impacts. And we all know that there's no fundamental solutions for man-made challenges currently we are facing for. Where uh, we have climate change, environmental issues, urbanization, and energy crisis, especially uh, during this uh, energy transition phase, is very is essential for us to think about what we can do to uh, make our mobility sustainable. I think that's the the the, the whole uh, idea. What I try to to cover today, so to go deeper to what we have already provided in the materials, also to think about the, uh, the future. Um, in the end, the conclusion I can draw is a fundamental challenge is human behavior, is ourselves. Next, please. So when we talk about ITS, uh, a lot of people think about many, many things. Actually, the backbone, the core, the start uh, of uh, ITS is from automotive industry. We are talking. We were. We started from the from the car industry, uh, the interest, the business, also the technical development. Of course, it's not only about the control uh, systems. It's also related to communication technologies. Communication, we have in vehicle communication, also vehicle to uh, vehicle direct communication, also vehicle to infrastructure. You can also think about the bi-directional or single adjusted broadcasting. Uh, 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 communication. So on the right upper side, you can see the vehicle is not about itself. It's also communication with other road users. So in the high, uh, high at a higher level, when we use the term Italian transport system, it's not only about the uh, vehicle on on road. So not only surface transport. We also talk about air, multimodal transport, also different modes. So in the interaction between all the road users, how to make road safer, how to make the uh, environment efficient, also uh, economically uh, will benefit to the society. Next, please. When we talk about the Italian transport system, the, the hot topic is the corporate automated driving. Actually, it's not new. In my view, it is still Italian transport system. We are just talking about the different levels of the automation. Um, so now we have level two. So then don't, don't believe all the advertisement that they're share, uh, selling level three. There might, might be some level three vehicles for, for, for testing, maybe some uh, commercialized, but a very limited number. Um, most of them are still, by definition, they're level two. Um, so we are on the way to the higher level of automation. So it's not just the automation for automation. If we say we go to the Mars or go to the moon, it's not really just uh, uh, to, 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 to let the vehicle drive by itself. It is really uh, about the technical development. We, what we have seen, the robotics development, the sensor technology, 
technology development, communication technology, we have a lot of choices, and also the reliability is increasing, robustness of the systems are increasing. So in the end, what we will achieve is uh, you will the vehicles anyways much safer than in the past. You will be safer for every every road user, not only the uh, the driver or occupants in the vehicle, and that is our goal. Also, with the technical uh, technical development, we have seen that the computer science so many years uh, uh, development. Also, with the internet, we have we can do more things than we couldn't do in the past, and that is the goal for uh, automated driving. In my view, is a milestone for the future. But uh, during the development, the whole society will benefit from it. Not only for the car itself, but also for all the road users. Also, with the knowledge, we can develop many things, others, many other things. Uh, you can also check. Uh, this is uh, one of my edited books uh, uh, with more details about the technology. Next, please. Um, this is a high-level uh, architecture of a, what, what I'm talking about, the communication technologies. So you can see in the middle, the red part, you can have the, the, the vehicles, uh, you have vehicle-vehicle vehicle communication, you may have a vehicle to uh, road set uh, to infrastructure communication. Uh, when we are talking about a traffic network, uh, actually we have links between the nodes, let's say, put in a simple way. And on the nodes, you have synchronized intersection and non-synchronized -synchron intersection. So you may have a control ITS system, you may have advanced traffic management systems on top, but in the end, on the uh, operational level, you have the detailed communication and how making it work. Uh, this is a, 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 just a high-level architecture. You can use a mobile network with, with the cellular communication. You can also use, uh, uh, let's say, the physical layers IEEE 802.11p, uh, short-range dedicated communication between vehicles. Next, please. And this is an illustration of how we do for uh, pedestrian safety. So one uh, vehicle you see from uh, north to south may, did, may see a, uh, a pedestrian is crossing, uh, but the vehicle from east to uh, from west to east may make a U-turn, but may not see this uh, pedestrian. If the message from the north, the, the blue uh, vehicle from the north would detect this uh, pedestrian. Could, if this information would be shared with another vehicle on the opposite, uh, on the uh, let's say for, uh, east, uh, west to east side, then uh, this collision could be uh, mitigated or uh, collision could be prevented. Next, please. So this is based on, you, you can think about uh, one is uh, uh, from vehicle sensor, one is from road infrastructure. So you may use camera, uh, cam message sent to the to, uh, to the other vehicle. You have, a, 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 a let's say, a, a safe intersection. Next, please. Yeah, this is an illustration of the lane change. So it's another uh, uh, application it's, uh, uh, to avoid the collision between vehicles. Next, please. Um, this is another illustration. So in the course, uh, you have red materials. So we uh, gave an example of glossa for uh, vehicles. So glossa is not only for vehicles. Glossa could be for uh, different user groups, could be for cyclists, uh, also could be for pedestrians. So then uh, this, this slide I just illustrated in uh, one of the projects called Excycle. So we developed this uh, system. Uh, if we detect a, a cyclist, we will uh, let the uh, the traffic light always get green. Uh, we have this application also because we understand that cyclists, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, so in the Netherlands we have a lot of cyclists and uh, people hate to stop. It doesn't matter how long, even if it would take a detour, they simply hate to stop. We know this, so we think it's better, uh, otherwise they may drive, just ride through the, the red light, so the best way is to, to keep them green. And this is the way we developed. Next, please. And this is an illustration of some use cases. I guess slides will be shared with you. I won't read through, I'm gonna highlight the next one. Go to the next. So uh, cooperative uh, ITS is, uh, you, you have connectivity. So cooperative ITS is also called connected with uh, vehicles in, in, in some other countries. 
Um, so if you would, uh, uh, some road users, let's say pedestrians, maybe older people, maybe disabled people, they may, the, they may need a longer green time than the regular, than normal people, let's say the, with the normal uh, walking speed. So this moment we can think about to give the, to develop, we have a developer app app uh, called a cross walk so they can uh, we can detect this uh, user group when they uh, at the intersection they uh, they will get a relatively longer green time next please and this slide you have seen in the material already uh, i just want to summarize so when we talk about ITS, in, uh, the the start point was from the vehicle's automotive point of view, but in the end, it extended to the whole infrastructure. And this is just to illustrate the infrastructure the role. <laughs> we have cooperative vehicle, we also have cooperative infrastructure. I, I would like to uh, take more time for questions, I, and uh, my presentation is this slide. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Meng, for this presentation. It was very interesting. Um, are there any questions in the chat box? Or so you can either put your question in the chat box or just raise your hand and um, yeah, ask your question directly. OK. It doesn't seem like there are any questions for now, but if anything comes up, um, please feel free to just put your question directly in the chat box and we'll go through them uh, at the end of this session. OK, now we'll let um, Diogo Martins um, give uh, his presentation then um, on uh, how the city Able enables inclusive transport and mobility. So I have a lot. Um, so to start uh, explaining why we we decided to uh, create City Able, uh, to, we basically identified uh, two gaps between what we are doing on a real world and what we are thinking about on planning. Uh, one of them is is about uh, engaging with people. So, what what are we actually working on when we plan it? We think about uh, infrastructure and many other things that we are working on, uh, especially for uh, mass transit or public transport or uh, infrastructures that will serve public uh, and we understood that there is this lack of um, direct engagement with people. So this was the first sign that something was not working well. We we could understand what uh, what are the main issues. So some of them are related to uh, poor quality of the, the infrastructure. So you might get uh, low quality on accessibility, low quality on the passenger experience and some other aspects, but also on services. So for example, when you plan a, a public transport service if you don't actually uh, engage directly with the ones that are going to use the, the service you might find this problem of you plan and then you start implementing the service and the service actually doesn't uh, fit what people are looking for so this is one of the things we are trying to uh, to change. So to change these things, we have to start work, working directly with with people, and then we 
we understood that uh, working with people is not just about uh, inviting them to to, uh, to 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 have some questions about uh, the plan that you already have and you already are very confident about these plans. It's about start an, uh, on an early stage of the process. So before you actually work on a final plan, we, we want to people to influence this planning. So we we work on a co-creation method. So basically we bring people and especially we uh, uh, we want to value people that are not like super experts or super uh, uh, well educated on a very specific topic. We want to bring you real passengers. So people that are just using uh, transport or, or using your city and we want to work directly with them. Uh, from this, we we also identified a sec uh, second issue, which is about data. So basically, when we talk about uh, mass, we, we don't have uh, enough data about accessibility and spe especially about uh, the quality of this this accessibility, because usually when we define uh, some data about accessibility is about if there is something there or not, but we don't evaluate the quality of of that uh, infrastructure. So we don't know if this these characteristics of of accessibility they if they they fit the expectations of of the public. Uh, for that, we developed a different approach. So we we created a, a, a data model that actually is more like a tool. So you can use it to record data from real world and public transport infrastructures. We we also developed in a way that uh, you can uh, use it for future infrastructures that are not yet developed. So the idea is basically to create a sequence of, of steps that people have to do when they use public transport. Then, for example, if, if in the future you have um, autonomous vehicles as public transport you you still can still evaluate the the stops and and other infrastructures that are created specific for these vehicles so it's not just attached to uh, the current design of a bus stop you can actually uh, evaluate regardless of the design or what vehicles are there or what or other things that can be developed and implemented in the future. So this uh, this process to work we we define that uh, the methodology would require a group of uh, passengers to to make these evaluations, but also to to allow these to, to be used on a crowdsourcing system. So you can uh, you can have, for example, then a website that will, will just ask passengers about their experience. And you can ask them several simple questions that will allow you to, to collect information. Uh, from our experience, it works 
better if we go with their with people and then we can collect more information and this is also more reliable uh, and uh, you have a better quality of 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 the results but um uh, it's it's very focused on being flexible so the idea is is always to provide information and not just create something that stucks everyone to a very specific way of doing it so this is what we try to offer as as a service so we 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 offer this idea of being very flexible very open and to to clarify to everyone that we what we actually do as a work is connecting the people with the with the technicians so so we try to close this gap and that's that's the point we are not offering a very close uh, solution for uh, companies so uh, i can i can tell you that uh, we are going this week uh, starting tomorrow we are going to do more evaluations in lisbon and these evaluations uh, will be focused on uh, bus stops at bus to bus terminals uh, they they want they, they will provide us information about uh, what is there but also what people expect to be there so for example if, if the the place have toilets or or not if the, the accessibility is okay if the, the people want some specific uh, uh, some specific uh, accessibility characters present on these places or not so we we are going to go very deep on on what people desire for these spaces. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jogo, for your presentation. Um, very interesting indeed, and I wish you success with your um, yeah, study in Lisbon. Uh, are there any questions uh, for Jogo about what he just presented? Mm, I guess not for now. Um, okay, then I guess we can move on to the next presentation. Thank you again, Jogo. And uh, now we'll have uh, Tito Tai from Mobile Data who will present and you'll be sharing your own screen, right? Yes. Great, thank you. Hello everyone, hope you can see my screen. Um, so actually it's very good that I'm just after Diego because he talked about data and it being somehow meaningless if it's not analyzed, if not of high quality, if it does not exist at all. So that would be the first step of anything we want to all do together as an ecosystem if we actually want travelers and passengers using more sustainable uh, mobility. And I think I will definitely steal from uh, Meng the idea of not talking about mass and just focusing on sustainable mobility. Uh, I'll go quickly through mobility data and who we are. We are also a non-profit organization with two headquarters and initially we started by focusing on open data specification for uh, mobility services for shared mobility and public transit to be represented in application, in trip planning solutions, on website and so on. But we quickly realized that having a format to exchange the data is not enough. We need data quality, and that's why we then decided to uh, develop open source tools to make sure that the, the data is meaningful to the travelers and is not just a bunch of code 
that one uh, uh, software to the other are exchanged without it uh, benefiting uh, sustainable mobility. So we created some tools for public transit data that I will quickly go through and also some for uh, shared mobility because I know you will have the slides uh, and that Casson will do an amazing job at sharing all of this with you. Uh, feel free to explore them at your own pace and then send questions if you have any uh, of how you can integrate them. Uh, the first tool we have to check data quality is the canonical GTFS schedule validator. So why is it named like that? Canonical means that it follows to the T the specification. It helps you decide or assess if your feed of uh, information expressed in GTFS schedule is valid or not. It's also free because it was based and created by an open source community and it can be very easily extended as any open source tool. So you just take the part you want, you can integrate it in your pipeline or you can tell us a few uh, features that you want to add and so on and so on. And uh, based on all the feedback we receive, we can also receive a contribution in code. We make Make sure that it keeps on uh, being iterative to benefit the needs of the industry. The current version is version 4.0 and we will have a 4.1, I believe, in a couple of days. Another validator, this time is for GTFS real-time, so real-time information uh, and same. It has the same characteristic as for the a static information. It's also a result of a community. It was donated to us by the University of South Florida and now everyone is made maintaining it to make sure that we can make it evolved. Going with the GTFS real-time validator, we have another open source tool that is real-time binding. Because GTFS real-time was based on protocol buffer, which is very specific. It's actually a binary format. So the bindings will take any uh, piece of information that you have in a coding language that is structured. So it could be Java, for example. Uh, and bind it, transform it into uh, GTFS real-time. Using these open source tools will allow you to A, save some resources, you don't have to code the same thing again, and B, make sure that it actually works, that you don't have error in cascade when you put the feed, for example, into the validator. The last uh, tool, open source tool we have is actually a database where you can find the list of all the open public feeds that we know of that are expressed in GTFS schedule or GTFS real time. Why I wanted to mention that one for data quality is when you start from scratch, I think we had some questions from people who have uh, no data in the city or in that network. It's good to have a look at city that you know that might be a little bit similar to you or have a network that ha that share some characteristic to see how they actually use the specification, uh, how they model the data or, or why not reach out to them to get some best practices. That was for public transit. For shared mobility data, same. We also have a validator uh, that has exactly the same characteristic. It was also created by a community, donated uh, to us uh, to maintain, to make sure we animate uh, and federate the open source community around it. Current version is 1.0 and you have here all the link. So same as before, very easy. You take your feed, you send your link to the that online tool and it will tell you if they have warnings or mistakes. Again, free to use so it can be inside your coding pipeline on the backbone of your app or you can just use the online version if you want to check your final product. Same as for the database for public transit, we also have one for shared mobility because we know that it's also a very new and gray area. Some uh, informal transport services, for example, can be uh, attached to shared mobility. It's it's a good way to start having a look if it actually fits your need or not. I think that was it for my presentation. Uh, quickly, just to want you let you know, uh, I know we were very quick during the whole course actually about the exact specification GBFS and GTFS. So there are upcoming webinars that are free if you want to register to them where we go more in details in what these data formats mean. I think that was it for me, so we can take questions or give the floor to the 
other speakers. Great, thank you so much, Tito. Yes, any questions? Everyone seems pretty shy today, so I guess we can move on to the next speaker, Fabio. Um, I'll be sharing our, is there, did I just see a question? Yeah, a question Papa? came through. Ah, yes, so. Okay. Yes, good question from uh, David from uh, BC Cargo. So if I read it, is to ask if we had time to explore or evaluate the status, quality and integration of data in Latin America. So yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that there are several initiatives launched by CAF, the Development Bank for Latin America, that we cooperate with to help them build a regional data hub, same as our database, that would be for uh, shared mobility and public transit information. As of today, we know of some initiatives who are using GTFS, for example, uh, Trufi in Colombia, uh, and they use our tools to pro provide better data quality. It, we haven't made a global assessment yet. I hope hope uh, that uh, we will be able to do so, but on some specific cities and country, feel free to ping me and I will give you the results we have. Great. I think that answered the question well. Uh, so if there are no other questions, I think we can move on just, uh, just to keep track of time. So Fabio, I'll be sharing your slides and. Um... Sí, nada, nada, pues sí, pues eh, muchas gracias, pero que al menos no es retrasado de datos, ¿no? Okay, Fabio. Um, wait, sorry. Not sí. share on the screen. Sí. Okay, perfect. Sí. Okay, perfect. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I'm from uh, Plus Service, uh, uh, the Italian company who deals with ERP for transport companies and who also produce MAAS uh, mobile applications. Uh, so we are the company that uh, uh, developed the Quito City Mass application. Uh, this uh, application has the some typical uh, uh, mass features, for instance, uh, a multimedia travel planner. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's okay. Also, this slide, fantastic. Uh, the no, mm, the pro thanks. Okay, uh, I was just introducing something about uh, uh, the Kito mobile app. Since uh, in this presentation, I won't go into technical details. I won't talk to you about. Uh, uh, technical specification, but uh, I would like to share with you the experience uh, and also the challenges and uh, um, the challenges we have uh, we had to face in uh, developing this application. Uh, the the Kitos application, just to be uh, short, as a multimedia travel planner based on GTFS uh, data. Uh, it has uh, information about public transport routes and timetables. Uh, allows the, ticket, the the user to purchase, download, and activate tickets. And also, uh, it is open, obviously, to integrate uh, uh, different services, uh, different other mass services. So, uh, as I told you, uh, in this uh, short presentation, I would like to share with you challenges and update adaptations, uh, and also the experience we started from uh, to develop this app. So next slide. Yeah, we started uh, from uh, uh, well. Plus service is uh, uh, as a consolidated experience in uh, developing uh, uh, mass mobile application and also in e-commerce. So to develop the Kito application, we started from our experience, especially uh, from our main uh, application that is uh, My Cicero. Um, this application is this mobile application has been. Uh, uh, recently completely uh, redesigned, uh, re-engineered and also rebranded since uh, now it, uh, its name it is uh, Manego uh, since we, the service is part of Manego group. Uh, 
uh, this application has, uh, as I told you before, a multimeter travel planner. Uh, this uh, um, is used to plan journeys uh, using buses, trains, uh, uh, undergrounds, uh, ferries, and so on. Uh, it offers also timetables information, so information about stops and routes uh, uh, around the user positions, and uh, so uh, the user can uh, um, can see where to start and when to start uh, for for a travel for a journey. Uh, we also integrate uh, uh, some real time information that we got from uh, GTFS real time. Uh, for instance, uh, information about congestions on buses uh, and also on uh, delays. Uh, the app is, um, also includes uh, tickets purchase, uh, download in, uh, in the app, and also ticket act activations. Uh, so uh, we, we manage different uh, rules uh, to activate a ticket. For instance, the ticket may be active on purchase or it can be activated uh, uh, lately. Uh, doing something, for instance, uh, reading a QR code uh, on the bus. Uh, the app uh, also uh, integrate parking services uh, uh, or bike, scooter and uh, car sharing. So the user can unlock uh, uh, the vehicle, he rent and pay and can pay for it. Uh, we also have integration with cab and taxi services. Uh, the app is also integrated uh, in, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, turnstiles, uh, so we, uh, the user can use the app, uh, specifically the QR code generating, uh, generated in the app to open uh, the turnstiles. And also the app can allow the ticket to access uh, restricted time traffic areas. Uh, we, the app is also integrated in uh, ticket uh, tickets control systems, uh, so the the ticket inspectors can verify if the, the user has a, a, an active ticket and if the ticket is valid. Uh, next slide. Uh, in developing uh, the Kitos app, the main thing was that the app must be simple uh, to use, uh, intuitive and also really, really reliable. Uh, or the customer won't use it. Um, all the services and applications uh, that feed the app uh, were located, are located in a cloud uh, uh, hosted. And this cloud uh, is used also uh, for other mass applications uh, of the, the, the Solutions Plus project. And so we had to manage uh, uh, different time zones since uh, uh, the, the time of the, the cloud, that is UTC time, is different from, uh, for instance, from the Kitos time. Um, we uh, managed and we imported uh, the GTFS from Kitos uh, to, give, to give customers uh, information, uh, as I told you before, about uh, uh, routes and timetables. Um, also, uh, uh, we had to manage different rules uh, about uh, uh, activation and uh, ticket validity. For instance, a ticket uh, can be uh, active in, a, in an area, in a specific uh, uh, origin destination uh, travel, can be a single ride ticket or can be a time ticket. Uh, and these were all uh, things to, to be managed by the app. Uh, the app typically sends the customers, uh, the users, uh, notification by SMS and email notification. So we had to choose uh, providers correctly to be able to send uh, SMS uh, all over the world and also emails uh, to all users. Um, we also provided some tools uh, uh, to support Keto in monitoring uh, the, the, the whole systems. So typically we have uh, a module that is called assistant that is used by customer service uh, agents. We provided my check that is a mobile app used by the ticket inspector to check the ticket's validity. And also we produce some uh, directional reports to monitor the world system and sales. Uh, next slide, please. 
uh, also uh, and, and typically one of the first uh, uh, requests from uh, from our from the companies and also uh, from uh, from Quito's municipality was that the app um, should uh, uh, be compliant with corporate colors uh, should use uh, uh, logos uh, of the uh, transport uh, companies and also of the uh, city administration. Um, um, we were uh, one of uh, of uh, our one of the diffi di uh, difficulty we had to face was to synchronize teams from different countries, so from Italy and from Ecuador. And uh, maybe sometimes there were some delays because of that. Uh, also, it was uh, necessary to adapt uh, uh, the the, um, the technical uh, priority and milestones uh, to the one of the local administration. That uh, and, and often they the, the um, these priority were different. Next slide, please. So uh, concluding. Uh, uh, real, uh, man, um, producing these, uh, the Quito app, it was uh, uh, absolutely a uh, really important uh, experience, both from uh, a technical point of view, since uh, uh, we worked with uh, uh, an international scenarios, and also from uh, a human point of view. Uh, maybe uh, the actual Quito app is uh, just uh, a few of um, uh, typical mass uh, integration, but it is of course open to integrate more services. So for example, uh, sharing uh, parking systems, uh, uh, turnstile opening and so on. I think that uh, it's uh, everything from my side. Great, thank you so much, Fadir, for this presentation. Very interesting uh, application, very elaborate indeed. Uh, are there any questions from the participants? Not, I have a question actually on, um, so for the next steps then, it's more on further, further uh, like in the, um, including different modes of transport into the app or is there also a plan on developing such an app for a different city other than Quito? Uh, not uh, in uh, in South America now we are dealing just with Quito uh, but uh, uh, in uh, also in a solution plus uh, project uh, we are de we are developing application for instance in Africa uh, in Rwanda for Kigali city and uh, we are um, also working in Dar al Salaams um, uh, in Africa too. Uh, yeah, we we had some uh, uh, answering to David. Uh, we had some uh, problems dealing with uh, the transport uh, companies. So not everybody is uh, open and uh, uh, always collaborative to give informations to produce the app. Maybe uh, it is not uh, so clear. Uh, it is still not so clear uh, all of the the benefits that this kind of app can give to everybody. Well, we typically um, think that to realize a new app for a new city, for a new project, uh, uh, takes up as about six months, uh, starting from the, the initial uh, analysis. So. Uh, starting from collecting informations, uh, collecting the GTFS to produce uh, the, the, all the informations that we need to, to feed the travel planner, and also uh, installing and configuring all the services and applications that feed the app. Okay, great. I guess that answered David's, uh, David's and Anton's questions. Um, yeah, if there aren't any other questions, we'll open up the floor for the yeah, Q&A uh, to, um, yeah, 
to you all the speakers. So this can be questions about um, about the training courses that were given, about mass and ITS in general. Um, yeah, so please feel free. Do we need to pick up questions uh, sent uh, uh sorry i couldn't hear that who was that uh, uh ming is here I, I remember there were some questions sent before uh, yeah indeed so we do have some questions if there are none from the participants now we have received some questions um via the survey so um, the first question, I guess we can go with um, is uh, is here the second one. Um, based on your experience and research, which country do you think is leading the way in terms of intelligent transport systems so that other countries can learn from it? So Meng, if you'd like to give a go at answering this question. Sure. Um I would say from which perspective we would think about what is the, the by definition the leading. Um, I would say um, the Netherlands is one of the leading countries, uh, mainly from the infrastructure perspective, deployment of ITS solutions. Um, the most uh, active country uh, with OEMs, I would say Japan. Um, Japan uh, they develop systems always in a very practical way, also with strong support from the government. So I would think about the two leading countries in Europe could be the Netherlands, in other Asia could be Japan. But it's, uh, yeah, it's difficult to, to, to say you can also say Germany is also very good at this. I think the core of this one is uh, people want to know what uh, other countries can learn from it. Again, the learning is not just a back practice. You can just copy and paste. Um, I mentioned all these rich countries. The, 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 the substantial investment is not suitable for Africa or some developing countries to just copy and paste. I would say the, the, the learn is to also to learn the, the, let's say, to avoid uh, making mistakes or avoid using the same paths like, like China is doing, you know, to, to get rid of the bicycles, to, to put everybody in the car, to use a very sustainable way to develop uh, all the infrastructure and to use them in a in sustainable way. I would say that the lessons learned is more important than just a copy paste uh, advanced technologies and put it on site. And also every solution, as I mentioned during my presentation, every solution has its drawbacks. Doesn't matter what we do, there's no fundamental solutions. The limited knowledge on science and technology still for the moment, especially due to the uh, energy transition phase. So in general, I would say think about the sustainability, sustainability you know, uh, look at the whole supply chain and look at the country's situation, what you can invest and invest in a proper way. Mm -hmm. I do keep it short. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like that answers the well the question. Thank you, Meng. Uh, then we have this question. Uh, this question: What are some potential disbenefits or negative consequences that could arise from the widespread adoption of mass services, and how can they be mitigated or addressed? So that's an interesting question indeed, uh, especially for our training. Um, Diogo, uh, I guess you can give a go at answering um, this question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this uh, from uh, from the experience that we have uh, uh, now is is about um, is mostly about the exclusion of some groups, especially those who don't have a smartphone or, or they can't afford a smartphone or they are um, excluded in from the point of view of uh, technology. So, for instance, you may have uh, like older people that are not so uh, they, they, they can't 
just learn about how to use a smartphone or how to use some some uh, types of software that are more difficult to uh, to them because they are not used to use these these softwares before so they are not like us that we are like very uh, uh, in depth on 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 software and and technology in general so we are able to to just adopt everything very quickly and other people are not just as quick as us and then you may have people that uh, they they are may not, they may or may not be able to to uh, uh, to understand exactly what you expect them to to work on or to do on a different app or, or a website or something something else like that. So we have to be careful about moving every everything to to one hundred percent online or or to the apps because some people will will need some old school uh, techniques to to access the information. So and uh, the, the the things are about how do you understand these these publics? So first of all, identify them, identifying why why they don't uh, use and why they can't use, and what what else will work for them. Uh, you have a great example. I always forget the name of the city, but in a in UK you have you have a small city that they they basically implemented a system that uh, runs their buses as a mass solution. So the software uh, automatically uh, define routes and and uh, and you can you can basically call the bus to pick up you from anywhere in the city. Then the software uh, combines all the data from the different uh, pickup points and then creates a route for the bus. But they uh, quickly understood that if they went uh, fully on on the app and don't have any different solution, any alternative solution, they would uh, not comply with uh, some regulations about about discrimination and and protected characteristics in UK. So you have to, what they developed was was a service to to basically call them you, to the phone and very old school stuff. You just pick up the phone, call them, and ask them to pick you up at some point, and they introduce manually that information on the system. So uh, for them, this works. Okay, so you may have to find what best uh, works for you in your specific, specific context, because some places this will work, some others this will not work, and you have to understand exactly what, what works for you. The other and classic, I will finish now, uh, is is about uh, the the general acceptance for these technologies. So if you are trying to force a, like a society where in general people don't like to use technology or don't like to use apps for these things, you you are going to find that no one will try to. To use it because they don't want to. So you may have to understand that just uh, trying to implement because you want to implement, it may not work for for your case. And you may find like it's better to just use software and my solutions as a tool for you as professional instead of uh, delivering this. Uh, solutions for uh, 
for passengers because passengers may not accept this, but you as a company, you may can have benefits from, from using this data. So that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Gilgo, for this uh, this answer too. We had a last question, but it's already two past five, so I don't know if we should. People are still still there. I guess we can maybe take the time to answer it. It is an interesting question. Um, maybe those who who haven't uh, answered any questions yet can can give a go at the. What strategy should African country use to change the mind of both our leaders and citizens in order to make them accept mass? So I think Lamprini, who was also one of our trainers of the e-course, um, is here in the call today. Um, if you would like to, to give some insight or, of course, it's it's a difficult question to answer completely, but. Yeah, that have... was what I thought. It's quite <laughs> complex question, I suppose. Um, yeah, just given some experience that we have, I'm working for Transport for West Midlands and we have piloted a mobility credits project. Um, I think the first step, obviously, is always making sure that we're communicating the, the concept in very simple terms and we're communicating the benefits of this. But I suppose it, it always depends on the specific context, the political context and people's behaviors. Um, and probably the first step is always understanding barriers uh, to acceptance and how people perceive the benefits and also how politicians and other stakeholders. So maybe the first step would be more research on these things. I suppose that, that's what I would prioritize. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Indeed. And it really comes uh, comes back to what Yogo explained about understanding the, the local context and adapting uh, whatever yeah, initiative you put in place to to make it adapted. Yeah. Um, OK, so if there are no questions, um, thank you, Lamprini, for your answer. There are no other questions. Uh, I think we can close uh, this exchange session. I'd like to thank all of the, um, the speakers for participating and taking the time to uh, to present today and uh, and and answer your questions. And of course, all of the the work that you've put in uh, along the e-course uh, all uh, these last few months. And uh, thank you also to all the participants and the students who have followed along the e-course. And um, yeah, for for your for this for participating in this exchange session. Um, so I'd like to remind you to please not forget to submit your assignments and uh, fill in the feedback survey. And with that, I will close the session and let you all go and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye bye from Tanzania. Thank you. Bye bye from Ecuador.